Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. This one's going to be an indoor episode because we are going to be focusing on brewing. We've done a little bit of brewing up until this point, but I haven't fully explained some of the mechanics involved and exactly what you need to brew a different bunch of potions. So we're going to do that today, but bear in mind this will not be a complete guide to brewing because there are some ingredients for brewing which still evade us and we'll talk about that a little bit later. For now we need to get hold of some glass and luckily I still have some left over from the sugarcane farm project. We've only got three but that should be enough for the moment because three glass can be crafted into three glass bottles. And glass bottles can be topped up from a variety of water sources but traditionally speaking in brewing you're expected to use a cauldron for this and I'll explain why that's not the best of ideas since if we fill up a cauldron with a bucket of water like so you'll notice that that completely fills up and it contains enough water that we can right click on it with these three bottles, completely empty the cauldron and end up with three bottles of water. And the same does work in reverse actually, you can empty a bottle of water into a cauldron if you want to fill it up one, two or three stages. But we won't be able to do that once we have brewed them into potions, which we're going to do by placing the water bottles in the brewing stand and adding some ingredients. But now our cauldron is empty and we need to go and collect another water source from outside. Conveniently enough though, water bottles can be refilled from a single water source that will not deplete when you fill up water bottles from it. So what I tend to typically do is put two spruce trap doors in a corner or four spruce trap doors completely surrounding a block and then fill that central block with water and that makes for something that still looks like a barrel of water but will contain the water inside of there even if you end up opening some of the trap doors. Then even if we put all of the water back in the cauldron we can take our three glass bottles, walk up to this water source and fill them whenever we want to. From there we need to return to our nether supplies chest because the first stage of brewing almost all potions is to add some nether wart. We need to make sure we have blaze powder in the fuel slot here so that this bar fills up with orange to indicate that yes this brewing stand is fueled and ready to go and then we're going to pop a nether wart in here and this will start to bubble and the arrow will start to progress down and eventually we will end up with three awkward potions which have no effects but these are the base potion to which you apply other ingredients to make all of the other potions with the exception of potions of weakness which we discussed in the episode about zombifying and curing villagers. For everything else though you will need to start with a nether wart applied to some bottles of water to make awkward potion and putting another nether wart in here right now isn't going to do anything so we know these potions are ready for ingredients. Obviously this is going to consume nether wart though so we're going to plant some of it outside here in the area that was previously occupied by my sugarcane farm. We'll probably look at farming nether wart on a larger scale a little bit later but for now I'm going to create a 5x5 patch of soul sand and we're just going to plant all of our nether wart around here. And from this point on the nether wart will begin to grow through several stages much like overworld crops do until they become ready to harvest. Unlike overworld crops however you cannot increase the stage of growth by using bone meal. You can't give them a boost, you just gotta wait for them to grow naturally. Once they're fully grown however we'll be able to harvest them to get three or four nether wart back and increase our supply. So now that that's taken care of we can take a look at some of the potions it's possible to brew once we've added some nether warts to these bottles of water and we already have plenty of ingredients nearby although none of them are in this chest. <laughs> it's more likely that we'll find these down here in some of the ingredients that we received from the nether. Let's take a quick look. We have ghast tears. Those are a potion brewing ingredient. Magma cream is also a potion brewing ingredient. In fact, more blaze powder will get us a different potion as well. Then over here in the food chest, we can bring a golden carrot with us. We can bring a puffer fish with us. If we bring a melon slice and find some gold in here, yep, we should be able to bring that with us as well. Although we might already have some gold nuggets that I brought from the nether? Yes, we have some of those. Okay, so I will put the gold ingot away because all we would be doing is breaking that down into gold nuggets. So to combine the melon slice and the gold nuggets in my crafting interface here, we can get a glistering melon slice and that is a potion brewing ingredient as well. And I think we will start with these ingredients since these are the ones that are going to be more beneficial to the player to brew. Let's begin with a puffer fish. We're going to pop that in there. And once the brewing stand has bubbled and the arrow down here has has progressed, our three awkward potions are going to turn into potions of water breathing, which will last for three minutes. Now this is not the first time we have held some potions of water breathing actually, we found one of these in the treasure chest that we looted after having looted a shipwreck. We ended up finding a buried treasure map, that led us to a chest which can contain potions of water breathing that last for three minutes. For now we are going to 
store these in this barrel, where I've actually kept one of the Splash Potions of Weakness and Golden Apples from our zombie curing episode, just in case we get the opportunity to cure another zombie villager. But it seems like we're going to need to smelt a little bit more sand. We do have a little bit of that left over from the sugarcane farm, so we can turn more of this into glass bottles. We'll fill those up from our water source, we'll put three of them in the brewing stand, and the next thing we're going to do after we've added the nether wart and converted these into awkward potions, is add this magma cream, because this is going to brew one of the most useful potions in the game. I'll preemptively fill up these three water bottles, since we'll be creating these potions in batches of three. You don't need to add three every time, you can put just one or two potions in the brewing stand, but it's probably most economical for the ingredients if you put all three in. Now the magma cream is going to turn these into potions of fire resistance, which you may remember we can barter from piglins while we are in the nether, but it's good to know that we can brew those ourselves, and with the Basalt Delta spawn in this world, we can go and get some magma cream anytime we want to. We'll add these to the barrel as well. Our next batch of awkward potions is going to brew up, and I'll walk out to check on our nether wart field whilst those are brewing. Now, it'll take you a while to get used to the stages of nether wart growth, but there are three stages. The first stage here, when you plant them, the second stage, where they grow a little bit taller, and the third stage, where they are ready for harvest. If we want to, we can even break these with a fortune pickaxe, and you will get more nether wart back out of that, so kind of useful to know if you are short on nether wart in the early stages of potion brewing. So for our next batch of awkward potions, we're going to throw this ghast tier in. Remember, you get these from killing ghasts, although you need to make sure you can collect the drops, and often the ghasts will be flying around over lava or difficult terrain. But the results will be worth it, because the ghast tier will brew into potions of regeneration. They last a lot shorter of a duration than the other potions we've brewed so far, but that's because they will regenerate your health constantly while the potion is in effect. Let's grab that glass from the furnace, we'll need to make a lot more glass bottles. And it's probably a good idea to craft another barrel to store some of these bottles and water bottles. Those can be like our potion brewing shelves up here. So we'll throw all of the water bottles in there for now, just so we don't get confused because they look pretty much identical to the awkward potions. You've just got to mouse over them to see which one is which. Now this one we're going to add a golden carrot to, and the golden carrot is going to give us potions of night vision, which will completely light up your surroundings. Although bear in mind that that won't have any effect on mob spawning, since that is affected by block light, not the light that the player can see. So we'll be using night vision potions a little bit later on. And if these look different to you if you've played Minecraft in previous versions, that is because in recent updates the team has tried to make these a little bit more easy to distinguish based on colour. They also used to glow in the same way that enchanted tools and armour do, but that's been taken away so you can more easily determine which one is which. So I'm still getting used to the colours, but the night vision potion is this very bright luminous kind of colour. Kind of looks like it's glow-in-the-dark paint or something, which I think makes it very easy to stand out. The water-breathing potions are this kind of seawater, greeny-blue sort of colour, so that's pretty easy to spot. The fire-resistance potions are bright orange, so that's nice and easy as well. And anything related to health is going to be pink or red, so the regeneration potions are this kind of deeper magenta colour. The glistering melon slice, when applied to these awkward potions, is going to get us some potions of healing. So as you might expect from a health potion, they are kind of the bright red of players' hearts, and those give you instant health. Unlike the other effects which have a duration, these potions will instantly heal you once and then the effect will be gone. So let's throw three more water bottles into here to brew our last set of potions and as you can see the blaze power in here has depleted slightly so we need to make sure there's some extra fuel here in case that runs out. And with the blaze powder in the ingredient slot instead of the fuel slot, these potions will turn into potions of strength. These currently last for a three minute duration and apply plus three attack damage to us. Considering that this sword already does 9.5 attack damage, that's a pretty significant increase. But it is possible to make it more effective. Because with many potions, it is possible to increase the intensity of the potion, the concentration, I suppose, of the potion, and have them apply more strength or more instant healing to you. A faster regeneration effect is also possible. And for potions like water breathing, fire resistance, and night vision, it isn't possible to increase the intensity of the effect. But for any potion that has a timed effect, like night vision for 3 minutes, fire resistance for 3 minutes, or regeneration for 45 seconds, we can also increase the duration of the potion. And we have a couple of ingredients down here in the basement that will let us do exactly that. We're going to dip into this first barrel of ingredients that we ever brought back from the nether. We're going to grab some glowstone dust, and then we're going to turn to our precious materials chest and grab some redstone dust. We're also, if we have any around here, of course we do, we're going to bring some gunpowder upstairs. 
says. And these three powders can modify the potions that we have already brewed. So the glowstone dust is the one which intensifies the effect. That will get you strength two, regeneration two, instant health too. But as I mentioned, has no effect on things like water breathing, fire resistance, or night vision, where intensifying the effect wouldn't really do anything. The next category is redstone, and that's what increases the duration timer. So that will increase our potions of fire resistance and water breathing and night vision to eight minutes instead of three minutes. It will increase the length of the potion of regeneration as well, but it won't have any effect on potions of healing, since those are instant and have no lasting effects. Finally, gunpowder has an effect we're already sort of familiar with since we used that to create the splash potions of weakness with which we cured the zombified villagers. Gunpowder will convert any existing potion into a splash potion which can be thrown instead of just drunk by the player. This allows us to use negative effects like weakness on other mobs or yourself if you're feeling spicy, but you can also add splash effects to any of these potions so that you can throw them on yourself instead of having to take the time to drink them. So a couple of quick examples. Using the potions that I'm sure this will be the most useful. We're going to take the three fire resistance potions. We're going to pop those in here. If I put some glowstone dust in, you'll notice it doesn't even start bubbling, so there's really nothing glow stone dust will do, but adding redstone dust will increase the duration by five minutes to give us a total of eight minutes of fire resistance per potion. So now instead of nine minutes of fire resistance, we have the option to have up to 24, which can be very useful if you're spending extended periods of time in the nether. The same is definitely true of water breathing, because you'll never know how long you're going to be spending underwater, and that will be very useful when raiding shipwrecks, ocean ruins, and ocean monuments. And it's worth noting that these potions will only take effect one at a time, so you couldn't drink all three of them in quick succession and have 24 minutes of fire resistance ticking down. You can only drink one, have eight minutes of fire resistance, and when that runs out, you can top it up with the next one. It is possible to drink one of these potions while the effect of the previous one is still going, but it will only reset the timer to eight minutes instead of adding eight minutes to the timer. Just to clear up any confusion that might have been there around that. Now let's see something that we can intensify the effect of. Let's give ourselves strength two. In this case, we're going to put the glowstone dust in here with our strength potions, and you'll notice that has started to take effect. And the strength potion is going to become a strength two potion. You'll notice the duration is cut in half, so you have a more intense effect, but for a shorter amount of time. However, these are now applying plus six attack damage, which almost doubles the amount of damage we're able to do with our diamond sword. And as you can imagine, those attacks would be pretty devastating on anything but the strongest of Minecraft's mobs. For the instant healing potions, there's really no reason not to increase their effect to instant health too, because that's simply going to restore more health. While the regular instant health potions will restore two hearts of health, the instant health two potions will double that, restoring four hearts. I can give you a quick example of that by hopping off of here, although I do have my feather falling boots on, so maybe I should hop off without those. And it's going to take a couple more attempts at that, considering that I still have full saturation, so I need my hunger to wear off first. Okay, here we go. I've knocked off five and a half hearts of health. We'll drink this potion of healing too, and instantly four of those hearts are restored, so we can top up with the rest of the steak, top up our water bottle, and return that to the brewing stand. The choice is slightly different with potions of regeneration, because we can increase the intensity of these to make regeneration two potions, but once again, the duration of these potions will be cut in half, leaving you with only 22 seconds of regeneration two, but that's 22 seconds in which your health will regenerate twice as fast. I should also add that you can't then add redstone dust to increase the duration again. It doesn't work like that. You get either one or the other, but it is possible to increase the duration of regen one potions with redstone dust, and so you can end up with regen one for a much longer period of time, but with a slower healing effect, or you can end up with regen two for a much shorter period of time, but a much faster healing effect. Finally, let's increase the duration of these night vision potions using redstone, and now we've used up enough blaze powder that we need to add another one in, but those will now last for eight minutes, and it's on these that I'm going to apply the gunpowder, turning them into splash potions of night vision that will also last for eight minutes. But here is another useful thing to know about the brewing stand. We can add three different types of potions to the potion slots here if we want to add one of these powders. So in in this case, gunpowder will convert all three of these into splash potions of their respective type. So we've got splash potions of strength, instant healing, and regeneration now. Likewise, if I wanted to increase the duration of three of these potions, I could mix and match the potions that I put in there and add some redstone dust, as long as the redstone dust applied to those potions. Now, as a bit of a field test, I'm gonna take four of these splash potions over to our starter cave, and I'll show you how splash potions are best used. 
Because a surprising element of this is how close you are to the splash effect can change the duration of these potions, even when we have 8 minutes with a splash potion of night vision. If I throw it on the ground at my feet and open my inventory, you'll notice that deducts a minute from the total. I only have 7 minutes of night vision that start to count down. But already you can see the effect. It removes all shadows from this area, showing us ore veins that we've missed, monsters roaming in the distance, and it's kind of impossible to distinguish which areas are lit and unlit anymore. It will also give you increased visibility when you go underwater, which can be very useful if it turns out that there are underwater resources that are worth having. Like over here, there is some deep slate coal, which I didn't realize was there, and I'm going to silk touch that because those blocks are actually relatively rare. Oh, I didn't bring the water breathing potions with me though, so I'd better return to the surface before I start to drown. As a quick sidebar, deep slate coal is a relatively rare block because coal typically doesn't generate below Y0. So deep slate coal can be found above that, but deep slate doesn't start generating until around Y8. So you're typically not going to find deep slate coal except in a very small portion of the world. And at that point, coal generation is at its least frequent. So while we found a vein of five here, you're not likely to find coal nearly as frequently as you do in the higher regions regions of the world. Like around the mouth of the cave here, for example, there are five or six coal veins just standing out from the rock right there. That's not going to happen in deep slate layers. Anyway, with our night vision potion still active, we can take a look around the deep slate layers and they might be slightly easier to spot ore veins in now that it is less dark around here. But honestly, I don't like exploring the deep slate layers like this too often. So you won't really see me doing this, even though the environment around me is a lot clearer. And it's because the deep slate texture just looks like TV static to me after a while. I find it kind of grating. Anyway, we've got three minutes of a night vision potion left and I'm going to try and find a zombie nearby so that I can demonstrate this next effect. Oh, there's diamonds up there in the ceiling. Okay, here we go. We've got a couple of zombies and I'm going to show you the better way to splash yourself with a potion, although we're going to do it with the twist of having a zombie nearby who's going to be hit by the potion effect as well. You should really be looking straight upwards and throwing it directly above you to receive the strongest effect. As you can see, in my inventory now, we have a minute 30 of strength 2, although the zombie that we splashed with it is going to have a stronger attack as a result, so we should be careful about that. So I'm going to quickly look up and throw a potion of instant healing on myself, and that's actually damaged the zombie while it healed me, because undead mobs are weak to effects that heal you. It effectively reverses the effect, so in this case, instant health is going to cause instant damage to undead mobs like zombies and skeletons. And I have that extra strength to effect for a little bit longer, but you've got to be aware of your surroundings and make sure you don't end up splashing it on something that's going to hurt you as well. I can one-shot zombies and creepers with my sword now though, which is pretty fun to do. <laughs> Alright, let's pillar up and collect these diamonds. I've waited long enough, <laughs> let's grab those. We've got a piece of diamond ore. Is there any more in the ceiling here? Nope, just the one block. Okay, well let's fortune that and see how many diamonds we get. That's more than one. That is three diamonds, very nice. It looks like my night vision potion is wearing off though. You'll see the environment start to flicker, the icon in the top right starts to flicker as well and the night vision potion wears off and instantly the area around us becomes a lot darker and more atmospheric again and we can see those areas where the mobs would clearly be spawning because I haven't lit them up with any source of block light like torches. There is one last thing I want to show you though and this is going to require me to take a little bit of damage intentionally and then set up a controlled explosion. So I've let these two zombies attack me, they've done a little bit of damage to me so far and I'm going to resist healing that with food because our last splash potion has the regeneration effect but we're not going to apply it in the normal way. Instead, I've tracked down a creeper, and we're going to splash the creeper with this Regeneration 2 effect, then block with the shield, and you'll notice that it leaves behind this lingering cloud of pink particles of that regeneration effect, which then apply the effect to us. The creeper was far enough away that I didn't end up splashing myself with the regeneration potion, but a creeper with a potion effect applied to it will explode, leaving behind a cloud of lingering particles, which can apply the potion effect to anything that walks through them. So you won't find this has a great deal of practical advantages, but it's still possible to block a creeper explosion with a shield, so in some cases Cases, that can lead to you getting some potion effects if you have accidentally thrown them. Or if you're interested in creating mini games, it can be a really interesting opportunity. I once planned for a challenge where people were going to have to work out that a creeper was appearing with a fire resistance effect already splashed on it from a dispenser. Then by blocking with a shield and absorbing that fire resistance effect, they would be able to walk through a wall of lava to get to the next objective. I never ended up building that dungeon, but hey, there's a really cool idea you can use. Now it is possible to brew a variant of splash potions that can create those lingering 
gathering clouds yourself instead of having to rely on a creeper for that. But we won't be able to brew them ourselves quite yet because they require dragon's breath. And for that, we have to go to the end dimension and defeat the ender dragon, which we're not going to do at this point in the series. But in future, once we have all the possible ingredients, I'm going to publish a complete guide to potion brewing, which will go over all of this stuff again and introduce some of the new stuff that we don't have access to yet. Back at the house after that little field trip, we're going to be putting more water bottles into here. We're going to grab some more nether wart from wherever I left it. There we go, in here. And we're going to brew one more positive effect potion that can be of assistance to the player. And then we're going to talk about inverting the effects of these potions to produce negative effects. So with our awkward potions loaded into the stand, we're going to break two of these sugar cane down into sugar, one of which we're going to put in the ingredient spot. And when it's done brewing, that will give us a potion of swiftness, which adds to our speed. Once again, these can be intensified using glowstone dust, or since they have a duration, that duration can be lengthened using redstone. They can also be made into splash potions by using gunpowder, and they are very bright blue these days. But you'll notice once again, I have the ingredients in my inventory to make a fermented spider eye. That's one sugar, one spider eye, and a brown mushroom. And fermented spider eyes, as I said before, can be used to brew potions of weakness without the need for adding nether warts. That's essential for zombie villager curing. But the other thing fermented spider eyes do is invert the effects of existing potions. So I'm going to grab one of the potions of swiftness we just brewed, a potion of fire resistance and a potion of night vision so that you can see some of these effects because they're actually going to be quite different for each one of these potions. We put the fermented spider eye in, it starts bubbling down and you'll notice at the end of this process that two of these potions have undergone transformations but one of them has not. There is no inverse of a fire resistance potion. There is no potion or effect of fire vulnerability. So a fermented spider eye actually does nothing to a fire resistance potion. That's just to demonstrate that it can still operate the brewing stand, even though one of the potions it has no effect on. But the other two have changed. The potion of swiftness is now a potion of slowness. It has the opposite effect because we flipped it around using the fermented spider eye. And you might think that the inverse of a potion of night vision would be a potion of blindness or darkness, two of the effects in Minecraft that limit how much you can see. But actually, this has a slightly different effect. It becomes a potion of invisibility. So it's less that you can see more of the environment around you and more that the enemies around you cannot see you. If we splash ourselves with this invisibility potion, I'm going to do this outside so we get the full duration by throwing it up and chucking it on our heads. You'll notice that my arm disappears, first of all. You can see the tools that I'm holding, but my arm doesn't appear when I've got nothing in my hand. And if I go into third person view, you'll see that I am now a completely blank suit of armor. If I remove my armor and my shield, you actually can't tell where I am except for the occasional potion particles and the fact that the screen is centered on me. <laughs> but invisibility like this actually allows you to sneak up on hostile mobs which would not be able to see you otherwise. The effect will work even better if you are crouching at the time. If you are sneaking, then your footsteps will be quieter and mobs won't be able to detect you that way either. But it's also worth noting that invisibility, while it is really useful, becomes less useful the more armor you equip and is not completely 100% effective. Mobs will still be able to notice your presence if you get too close to them, so don't think you can just walk up behind a creeper and have it not explode. It does, however, have a pretty profound effect on the range at which mobs will detect you. So let's go through to the nether for a quick example. So right now, this magma cube is thinking about coming towards me. I'm pretty sure he spotted me because I am wearing full armor and holding a diamond sword, right? But now if I remove all of my armor and my shield, maybe I'll not hold anything in my offhand either, and I stand this far away from this magma cube, we're only three blocks away at this point, it's not getting aggressive towards me. It has not noticed me. It's just kind of going about its business. If I walk up even closer to it like so, I can sneak up to about this range here before the magma cube notices me and actually kind of made me jump a little bit there. And once it has done that, it will stay locked onto you for a little bit. So mobs that have targeted you will know that you are still there. But let's find a mob that hasn't targeted me yet. This little magma cube over here doesn't know I'm here. I can get within a couple of blocks of it, barely notices me until <laughs> I stand there for a little bit longer. So effectively, the range you can get up close to a mob like this is around two blocks before they will notice you. It may be even less if you are sneaking, but don't rely on that effect too much. I'm going to drink the slowness potion as well to show you the effects of that one, and it really does slow you down. You'll occasionally be hit by slowness if you're out in a snowy field and you encounter strays. There are a variant of skeletons that will shoot slowness tipped arrows at you. Alternatively, witches can throw a splash potion of slowness towards the player in order to slow you down and make it more difficult for you to escape. 
but as with any potion effects in the game, you should be able to dispel any of these potions instantly by drinking a bucket of milk. There you go, that clears up all the potion effects, the slowness and invisibility are gone, and I'm back to normal. A fermented spider eye will also invert the effects of a couple of other potions with somewhat predictable results. Potions of regeneration become potions of poison that will deal damage to you over time instead of healing you. Potions of instant health become potions of instant harming. And once again, those two are the effects that you can expect to be on the receiving end of if you encounter a witch out there in the overworld. Strength also gets inverted into weakness, although there is a different way of brewing weakness, of course, that doesn't require brewing a strength potion first. And for a full list of these potions and the ways that they can be affected by glowstone and redstone, I recommend checking out the Minecraft wiki, which always has useful potion brewing graphics and flowcharts and that kind of stuff. If you're confused by any of this stuff, if it's just a lot of information to retain, even printing that out and laminating it and sticking it somewhere in your room is probably going to help you remember which potions are which. But I think for an intro introductory look at potions, that's where we're going to leave it for today. Our field of netherwort is almost fully grown so we can harvest some of that and we'll have plenty of supplies to do some potion brewing in the near future. Well, that's where we're going to leave this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide, folks. I do hope you've enjoyed taking a look at potion brewing with me and we'll be doing a lot more of that fairly soon. But thanks so much for watching. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.